Hello and welcome to another Worshiping with St. Mark's video. Uh, my name is Pastor Julia Gonzalez and it is a joy to be worshiping with you this morning. And I pray that wherever this video finds you, whatever state you're in, that you may be able to set aside everything that's going on in the world and allow yourself to simply just be with us and to be with God and to be with the Spirit. It is a joy to be with you this morning again and welcome. Please join us in singing hymn number 465, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. Again, and welcome to worship at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. We're glad that you are with us this morning, worshiping online, and we are praying for you and your families in this day. As we gather this morning, just a reminder, as Pastor Brian invited us to do last week, to uh, share our experiences at hashtag at home with St. Mark's and uh, it's a way for us to stay connected to hear from others and to learn about how you are experiencing worship together also a reminder that uh, there are still groups meeting and if your groups are meeting please do check online and on our website for opportunities for uh, study and reading during this time as we gather this morning we know that there are so many needs in the world and our prayer and mission focus for May is East 10th Street United Methodist Church, their Children and Youth Center. The center provides quality care and education to Indianapolis families, regardless of a parent's ability to pay. They have a sliding scale, and this month St. Mark's is collecting donations that will help subsidize that parent payment and provide scholarships for children to attend. During the current health crisis, East 10th remains closed, but they are continuing to provide meals, care packages, and educational materials for the families that they serve. So please consider how you might be able to support the center with your prayers and offerings. Financial donations to East 10th Street, along with your contributions to St. Mark's, can be given at stmarkscarmel.org slash give. Because you give, St. Mark's gives. In addition, there is a special offering that can be given to UMCOR for the COVID-19 Response Fund. 
If you are interested in providing for this, uh, you can do that on our website as well. Thank you for giving. As we come now to a time of prayer, I invite you to remember those that you know, those that you love, who are suffering in this time, those who are celebrating in this time, and invite you now to be in prayer together with me. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we pray together this morning, let us pray for the people of this congregation. Let us pray for those who suffer and those in trouble. Let us pray for this local community. Let us pray for the world, its peoples, and its leaders. Let us pray for the univer Church Universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. And let us pray for the commun communion of saints. O oh God, in this day we ask you to gather all our prayers, those that we have shared in our homes this morning, those that we share with this community. We ask you to hold us and hold the world as you always do with love and care in this day. And so with confidence, we, your people, pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
sinner be still Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal So lay down your There's a grace when the heart is undefined Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be There was another in Across the bears, the bird, and another died for me. There is another in the fire. All my dead left for dead beneath. To my sin anymore. And should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. Cause I know. There is a grave that holds nobody
There is no other name but the name that is Jesus He who was and still is and will be through it all So come on man in the space between All the things unseen and this reckoning Our scripture this morning comes from Acts 17, verses 22 through 34. Now Paul stood up in the middle of the council on Mars Hill and said, People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. As I was walking through town and carefully observing your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. What you worship as unknown, I now proclaim to you. God, who made the world and everything in it, is Lord of heaven and earth. He doesn't live in temples made with human hands, nor is God served by human hands as though he needed something, since he is the one who gives life, breath, and everything else. From one person, God created every human nation to live on the whole earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their lands. God made the nations so they would seek him, perhaps even reach out to him and find him. In fact, God isn't far away from any of us. In God, we live, move, and exist. As some of your own poets said, we are his offspring. Therefore, as God's offspring, we have no need to imagine that the divine being is like a gold, silver, or stone image made by human skill and thought. God overlooks ignorance of these things in times past, but now directs everyone everywhere to change their hearts and lives. This is because God has set a day when he intends to judge the world justly by a man he has appointed. God has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection from the dead, this crowd on Mars Hill, some began to ridicule Paul. However, others said, we'll hear from you about this again. At that, Paul left the council. Some people joined him and came to believe, including Dionysus, a member of the council on Mars Hill, a woman named Damaris, and several others. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I was at the church this morning. Um, and while I thought about recording the sermon there, I decided that considering the scripture and where I was feeling led with it, it made more sense to just record here at home one more time. 
And yes, I have stopped by the church and been to my office a few times during this pandemic. It was an opportunity to pick up a few books because even though I have plenty and there are more in this apartment, there are still a few things at the at my church office that I need to double check with. And it was also a fun opportunity to continue rocking the pandemic mask. But it was good to be there. It was good to be at the church this morning to walk the halls and to be reminded that even though it's still the same on the outside, things inside are continuing to change. Construction updates have been continuing as workers social distance and practice healthy habits. The gym, the cafe gymatorium is coming along really well. But more than just the physical moments of the building, more than just the physical aspects, it's different inside the St. Mark's building because the people aren't there. It's different not being able to see all the preschoolers wandering the halls or seeing others in the office, or at least seeing not a full office, missing out on people who come into the church for meetings or to simply come and pray. It's all different. It's changed. And even once this chapter in our collective story is completed, those changes that occurred will still linger. We will, st we will still remember this. But for now, we are still in the midst of change, still becoming, and in part because of today's scripture, again, it just seemed really appropriate to record this from home. Now Luke's account of Paul's words, of his rhetoric and precision in presenting the gospel to non-believers, it's really something to behold because Paul is doing so much more than just testifying about his experience of God to the people of Athens on Mars Hill, because no, no, no. Our boy Paul is presenting a persuasive argument in the classic style, and it is beautiful. Like, this is hitting all of the speech geek elements for me. Because before you start a speech, you need to know your audience. You need to know who you're talking with. And Paul does this. He's got the people of Athens, and he knows that they have a shrine to an unknown God. He knows these people. He knows how much religion means to them. And he opens in a way that is strong and catches people's attention because nothing catches people's attention more than a compliment. Something that makes them feel good. Something that lets them know others have seen them, acknowledge what they're doing, the work they've done, and respect that. So Paul does that. He says these things, and then he uses that to make his transition into his opening arguments, to start presenting his case. Because in this case of offering a compliment to how religious the people are in a time where your dedication to the local religion was a means of showing how patriotic you were, that was huge. And then using that altar of an unknown God for his transition to say you are so religious that you will worship even that which is mysterious, that which you don't understand. That's beautiful. That's important. That's powerful. But let me take you a step further. People of Athens, people of Mars Hill, listen and know and hear from Paul his argument that uses emotional appeals and logic because the God that he is presenting, this unknown and powerful force, is somehow mysteriously almost impossibly bigger than any temple that human hands could build. The God that set the universe in motion doesn't need humanity to build a house for this God to reside in. That 
that's big. In Roman culture, a temple was where the god lived. Like, that was where the god stayed. Bringing things in that marked the god's divinity, that was part of their worship, part of their practices. But this unknown god that Paul presents doesn't need a temple, cannot be contained, cannot be understood in the way that his listeners were used to understanding the divine. He challenged their understanding. He offered a new way of thinking about religion and about life. And he got a response. Now, some people didn't like what he had to say. They heard him say that Christ rose from the dead and they immediately opted out. This discussion was getting too weird for them, too personal, too impossible. No thanks. That happens. They weren't convinced, but others were. Other people heard what Paul had to say and they're like, okay, something in this is resounding with something inside of myself. I want to hear more of this. I want to find out more. You and I, we're, we're going to talk more later. We're going to come back to this. And they did. And they kept coming back and they kept listening and learning and finding that, you know, this makes sense. A God who is so powerful and has so much love that death holds no power, that humanity isn't required to care for or clean up after. That's a unique type of God than what they were used to. That was a different understanding and it made sense. Altars can get dusty and idols can break after all. But to be presented with this God who was so powerful that he didn't, that God didn't need humanity, that God was bigger than human hands, this was something new. This was something incredible. And it makes sense because, come on, if you're an all-powerful God, what do you need humanity for? How could a God be so powerful and still be contained? Answer? If your God can be contained, then it's probably not God. Or at least it's probably not in control the way you think it is. I really like how Pastor Brian uh, phrased something in staff this last week when we were talking about the way the Holy Spirit moves and how we understand God. And this just, it resounded with me that God's spirit cannot be contained. Not by brick or by wooden walls or by any sorts of traditions or institutions that humanity can dream up. God, the one true God, cannot be contained. But where does that leave us? Because God can't be contained, but we're humans and we're limited and we like to organize things and have a way of classifying and understanding and categorizing. And please, we don't understand our full the full potential of our brains. Give us something to work with the same reason why a uh, pro tip when you're working from home don't do work in the bedroom because then when you're trying to sleep your brain turns to work and all the things you still have to do all the things you haven't done it gets messy and suddenly you just can't sleep you don't want to do that I'm sure many of you already know this but it proves my point we like to organize we like to have things in neat boxes we like to understand what's going on and have a clear understanding of what space is used for what. And that's okay. 
it is absolutely okay. And I don't want to give the impression in my choice to record this sermon from home rather than in St. Mark's Sanctuary that there's a problem with having the sanctuary or with having a church building because having an actual building to worship in and gather together, that is a huge blessing. And it's a sense of security that some of our siblings in Christ, they haven't been able to enjoy. It's okay to have a place where you need to gather. But right now, with COVID-19 and the pandemic and staying home and doing everything we can to be healthy and to be responsible in that, one of the things that I've had a hard time with is finding a place in my own home where I can be present with God. Obviously, I have turned this corner of my apartment into my religious space where I can record uh, videos for the service or have this as a background for any time I have a Zoom meeting. It works. But it's not the same. It's not perfect. It's not my perfect place to sit down and be with God. And when COVID-19 started, when the staying at home started, I tried to find that place. And I thought I found it at first. I thought I knew the perfect spot right outside on the apartment porch where I could go enjoy sitting down in the open air with a mug of tea, a comfy chair, and all the plants that Kyle and I are trying to uh, cultivate. Thought perfect. Being outdoors but still social distancing, what could go wrong? Something went wrong because before I realized that was the perfect space to sit with God, um, a nest of hornets decided that, there, that that was their space to be with God, and I decided I'm gonna respect the, I'm gonna respect their uh, claiming that spot for their spiritual space. Yeah, I'm not messing with that. And then I moved indoors, and suddenly the couch was too comfortable. It, it, it just didn't work. It was too relaxed. So I thought, oh, the comfy chair. Well, if I sit on the comfy chair, next thing I know, I've got 60 pounds of dog thinking if I'm sitting there, then that means I have to obviously have her on my lap. Not really ideal situation for journaling and being with God. Nothing felt right. Anywhere I went, Nothing felt perfect. There was always something wrong, something bothering me, something kind of like nagging on the peripheries, like, oh, what about this? Or, oh, you should do that. It was hard to find a space where I could quiet myself to be fully present with God. And it's tempting to think that, oh, I'll find that perfect place eventually. That there is absolutely a perfect spot, whether here or at St. Mark's, for being totally and completely with God. And the truth is, no place is perfect. There will always be something that goes wrong or steps in to distract us. Whether it's a hornet, a dog, a cold breeze, dust, uncomfortable chairs, a messy background, something's going to go wrong. Nothing we create will ever be 100% perfect. And that's okay, so long as we still keep being with God. What, you think just because I couldn't find the perfect place that I didn't find a place to at least be with God? Of course. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done. So long as we still keep seeking God's will, so long as we keep trying our best to live like God's children, 
going to be okay. It won't be perfect. It just has to get done. And in looking ahead to when we're done with staying at home and when we're back to full-time worship, I know that right now we've been shaken and that we've gained a more heightened awareness of what it means to try and be comfortable with being uncomfortable and we're working our way back to something more familiar but life is still going to be imperfect. We're still going to struggle. We're still going to have Things go wrong. I mean, if I think about it, I can remember at least 10 different times where something happened in a worship service in the St. Mark Sanctuary that had me going, Oh Lord, I'm going to hear about that later. And that's okay. That's part of always seeking perfection. Of seeking to be made perfect in God. That's part of what it is to be Methodist. We mess up. And we try again. We keep going. We keep seeking and finding. Even when we know that life is imperfect. Even when we know that we will make mistakes. That we will say the wrong thing. Or that we are going to do something that sends the wrong message about who God is. Paul messed up. Well, Paul did so many things right. He said so many amazing and wonderful and beautiful things. I mean, that phrase about how in God we live, move, and exist. In God we have our being. That is pure poetry. And people heard that and still didn't believe. So if they didn't believe Paul, there's no guarantee that they're going to believe us. But you still got to keep trying. We still have to work on being comfortable with being uncomfortable. We need to recognize that even if it's not 100% perfect, we still need to be with God. We still need to seek God out, seek to understand more and to do better and to just try. Even in the imperfections, we have to try. Because God is still there. God is still being the God who calls us to live and move and breathe and do incredible, crazy things. And that's okay. It's part of life. God is still God and God is still with us. God has gotten very comfortable with how uncomfortable humanity can be to be around. Let's meet him halfway. As always, I am so glad to have you on this journey with me, to be walking on this journey of faith with you. It means so much to be working through faith to be living into the imperfect and yet still seeking perfection and still seeking God alongside you. It's been a joy to welcome you into my home, to share part of my space with you. And I loved last week seeing how everyone responded to the at home with St. Mark's hashtag sharing pictures of worship and I love it so much. I would love it if you guys would do me a favor again. And if at the end of this video, you would share pictures of where you are, where you are experiencing God. Not where you're sitting to worship this video, but just some place in your apartment, in your home, in your house, on your porch, on your daily walk. Just pick some place and take a picture and then, um, Use the hashtag again, at home with St. Mark's. So that way we can continue to show and see how God is present with us. And that even though we're not experiencing God together, 
or at least not experiencing God together in the same physical space. You're still being with God and still being at home with St. Mark's. Go in peace. Amen. Please join us in singing hymn number 545, The Church's One Foundation. peace that God has given us, let us go forth knowing that we are called, that we are loved, that we are perfectly made even in our imperfections. You are loved, you are not alone, and together we're going to get really good at being comfortable with, with what is uncomfortable. Go in peace. Amen.